Swords are cool. I mean, they can slice stuff and poke things, and that's why I'm going to make a game where you get to be a sword. Before starting the game, I have to make sure I actually know what I'm going to make. Since this is a game jam, I only have 72 hours, minus sleep, and the game has to be a roguelike. Easy, right? A roguelike game has two main characteristics, procedural generation and hard reset upon death, meaning you lose all your progress. I came up with a few concepts incorporating the roguelike limitation, and I decided on making a controllable sword which attacks in the direction of your mouse and moves around a randomized dungeon, killing enemies. I started by coding some basic movement for the player, spending a while making sure it felt smooth when changing directions and made the player always rotate to face the mouse. I then made some vector art for a sword, which I think turned out pretty well and replaced the ugly rectangle with it. I also gave the sword an outline and added post-processing effects like bloom and vignette. Of course, since you are a sword, you need to have a way to attack and slice things. So I created two ways to attack, a dash which sends you flying forward through enemies and a slash which will let you swing your sword and damage enemies in front of you. Next it was time to make the environment. I started by making a simple prefab for a dungeon room and made a system which spawns a few of them in a snake like pattern. This works by checking which direction the previous room was spawned and choosing one of the three other directions for the next one. The flaw with this is that rooms could still overlap with older rooms if the snake shape curved back around. I was stuck on this for a long time, but eventually I came up with a very messy solution. After spending a whole day on the generation, I was pretty happy with it, so I decided to move on to making enemies. Since the game has a checkerboard background, I wanted to implement chess style enemies which have limited movement based on their type. I experimented with this and created a pawn sprite, which can be damaged by the player. But soon after, I realized that the one day I had left was definitely not enough to be able to make AI movement for each type of enemy. So I made an alien kind of enemy and just made it always move towards the player. I also added animations, screen shake, and particle effects for actions like damaging enemies and getting hit. At this point, the game was feeling pretty smooth, but it wasn't really a proper game yet. I made the game spawn some enemies throughout the level, and made a counter telling you how many enemies are left to kill. When there are zero enemies in the scene, you will move to the next level which will regenerate the dungeon, but with an increased amount of enemies and rooms, making it harder. With only a few hours left to finish the game, I quickly made a very basic music track building on a very cool sounding bass line. I also added some sound effects using this website and a not great looking menu screen. I could have stopped here, but the game felt like it was missing something. More variation. So I added in another enemy with a ranged attack and also a new type of room which is just a corridor. Both of these help make the game much more interesting and more difficult at later stages. Finally, with less than an hour remaining, I exported the game and uploaded it to the game jam. After spending three straight days doing nothing but making this game and sleeping, I finally finished it. The game ended up placing 35th overall out of 121 entries which is better than last time, so at least there's some improvement. You can play the game with the link in the description, and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one.